Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more. Well, and for make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Mount Everest, also known as Zumalanga, is the highest point on the planet, rising to a height of 29,031.7 feet at its summit. It draws the interest of both professional mountain climbers and casual hikers and mountaineers alike. Despite the fact that the intimidating Everest has been summited several times by brave climbers, its grandeur remains undiminished. It's difficult to put into words the sensation you get when you gaze down from the top of a towering mountain at the world below you. It can only be understood via personal experience. So why do so many people spend so much money to reach the summit of the tallest mountain on the planet? What challenges do they have in store for them? And where exactly is this point? Where the possibility of remaining there indefinitely increases dramatically, and where your guide and companions will almost certainly abandon you. In today's video, we'll go through these and other issues in greater detail. As a result, the peak is known by three names, the most famous of which is Everest. The mountain was given its name in 1865 in honor of surveyor Sir George Everest, who was the first to measure the peak's height and position for the first time in 1865. Mountaineers in Tibet named it Kumalong, which means Holy Mother, and later employees referred to it as Sagar Martha, which means the head in the gray-blue sky. They both believe the mountain to be sacred, and they're dissatisfied with the continual influx of visitors, yet they do well by guiding them to the top of the mountain. Climbers with years of expertise, as well as beginners who merely wish to establish a new record, are welcome. Make your way to the summit of the mountain. The fact that climbing Everest is one of the most costly tourist activities you could ever partake in is something we want to make very clear. Take a look at this. The typical cost of the vacation is between forty and seventy thousand dollars, depending on the destination. That makes a week in Disney World seem a whole lot more appealing, doesn't it? However, if someone is meant to climb Everest, someone else will just pay to climb without reaching the summit. Only approximately half of those who attempt the climb make it to the summit, with the remaining half forced to descend. Many climbers are well aware of the possibility of not returning, and each attempt is accompanied by concerns about whether or not they'll ever see their friends or family again. Because of this, those who have climbed Everest more than once or twice have compared it to space, or the ocean's deepest depths, because in order to reach the summit you must use oxygen canisters, because at altitudes greater than five miles, the so-called dead zone begins, where you begin to suffocate due to a lack of oxygen and your cells begin to die one by one. The level of oxygen in the blood of four climbers who were five miles above sea level was four times lower than the typical level according to blood samples obtained from them. Prior to their death, the figures are typically noticed in patients' patients. That's according to Dr. Jeremy Windsor, who conducted the research on the sample set. In 2007, he set a personal record for the highest mountain ascent. Now, according to American climber David Bashirs, that high is comparable to sprinting while forced to breathe through a straw. It's important to note that the path to the base camp, which is located at an elevation of 3.3 miles, and the ascending will take around three months because the human body is not naturally prepared to withstand such severe circumstances climbers are frequently required to undergo cerebral and pulmonary demonstrations the heart begins to beat faster in order to maintain the appropriate oxygen levels and it can exceed 140 beats per minute this significantly raises the chance of having a stroke or having a heart attack other risks lurk within the dead zone including losing your vision frostbite, and collapsing as a result of tiredness that comes on suddenly. Yet another challenge is that the wind at the summit of Everest may reach speeds of 450 miles per hour, which is comparable to a powerful hurricane. The alpine psychosis, as it's known, is the most terrifying thing that may happen. When you lose your sense of reality, you forget where you are and begin to experience auditory and visual hallucinations. You're said to be in a trance. Climbers have been known to take their clothing off at the summit of Everest, despite the fact that the temperature at the summit is between minus 4 and minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit, 
and they've even been known to communicate with imaginary companions. Then there are some who maintain their mental faculties while in the dead zone, but their physical bodies begin to deteriorate. Sleeping difficulties are a common occurrence. It becomes increasingly difficult to fall asleep or to get out of bed in the morning. Muscles atrophy, causing patients to lose weight fast. Fatigue and impaired vision also raise the likelihood of falling. The inability to think and make choices clearly poses a hazard, since the climber may easily stray from the course, forget to secure their safety line, or fail to notice that they have a low oxygen supply, among other things. Climbers with extensive experience have reported that individuals can clearly sense the balance between life and death, that the body begins perceiving sense, seeing colors, and even comprehending time differently as a result of this experience. Consequently, the first ascent was achieved in May 1953 by New Zealander Edmund Hillary and his guide, Corgan, who both died on the mountain. They just stayed for 15 minutes at the summit. During that moment, Hillary snapped a photo of Norge and his Serpa guide, who had left some chocolate on the snow as a present from the gods, and she erected a flag. Unfortunately, there is no image of Hillary on top of Everest because, as Tenzig explains, he was unable to use a camera due to technical difficulties. His Sherpa Norge, Snow Tiger, was given the rank of Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire on June 6, 1953, in honor of Hillary's accomplishments in the mountains. By the way, the Sherpas have been genetically suited to their height for thousands of years. They live at altitudes of around two and a half miles, and they labor in groups to complete all the tough tasks and transport food and equipment. Why do climbers leave the remains of their dead companions who make it to the summit behind if they're so passionate about reaching the summit and sharing the experience with others, you might wonder? Is it possible that the morality of Earth vary from those on mountain? Let's get a little further into this. As a result, by 1953, when the first individuals reached the summit, Everest had already received compensation for the trip, which had cost the lives of more than 300 people. Several climbers noticed that their companions were still alive, but continued on their way because there was nothing they could do to assist. On Everest, there's a point beyond which you cannot return. It's approximately 4.9 miles above sea level. A dying climber will be unable to be saved after that point in time. They're unable to move independently. The total weight of the person, including their warm garments and shoes, plus their regular body weight, is at least 200 pounds making it impossible to carry them down by themselves. When doing it in a group of two or three people, you'll end up being too broad for the way to navigate. So this does not imply that the climbers are cruel in any way. It's only that there are circumstances in which it's difficult to assist. When ascending, the amount of oxygen in the air is reduced to one-third of its maximum capacity, and the shortage of oxygen causes the body to begin operating at a slower rate. When it comes to saving several people at the same time on the ground, even the most physically fit person will struggle to do it on the mountain because of the presence of oxygen. Climbers claim that the oxygen tanks that everyone carries has a limited amount of oxygen and that if you try to aid someone, the oxygen will be depleted much more quickly. Instead of one person dying, two individuals would perish as a result of this. Now, if a climber has a regular supply of oxygen and the weather is warm enough, he or she will attempt to assist you. However, in other circumstances, the best they can do is communicate with the base camp. The bodies of the dead are also swiftly frozen by the weather conditions. So even if you try to take them down, it will take an inordinate amount of time, and the climbers aren't going to stop halfway up the mountain to help you. The remains of climbers who failed to reach the summit of Everest or another peak will remain in those mountains for the rest of their lives. That's the price you'll pay for achieving your goal and climbing to the top of the mountain. When it comes to mountaineering, the concepts of camaraderie and mutual assistance have distinct connotations than when it comes to everyday life. In the mountains, the human urge to assist and aid one another is diminished, and this is not because of morality, but rather because of oxygen deprivation, extreme weather conditions, and physical endurance. The climbers are persuaded that you're trapped between two worlds at the summit, as if you're on the verge of dying. Those who have reached the summit of Everest claim that people climb it just because it exists. Its very existence is a source of contention, and despite the fact that hundreds have perished on the way down, 
Everest hasn't shrunk in height since it was first climbed 70 years ago, making it a monumental achievement even today. Each step closer to the summit is a success. Some people say that those who climb Everest do so because if they can make it to the summit, everything else in life would appear to be simple in contrast to their accomplishment. That's all there is to it for today. Please remember to give us a like and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.